Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science Through Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about combined heat and power. So let's dive right into it. Well, first, what we are talking about, you have to understand this very thoroughly, is that most of our power generation is directly doing this one simple thing. You take fuel, you convert it into electricity. That's our core. Fundamentally, that's what we do most of the time, 99.99% of the time. Now, fuel to energy, while we know how to do it, it is very idiotically inefficient. What does that mean? That simply means if you take, let's say, megajoule content of a fuel, whatever it may be, coal, uh, petroleum, or natural gas, uh, let's say it has uh, 10, we barely get uh, basically four or five if you are uh, lucky if you are lucky with the generation unit uh, generally most generator units are not even that efficient 30 35 percent normally and big power plants the bigger they are actually there is more incentive to make it more efficient so uh, if you are lucky you can touch 50 percent so what the heck happens to remaining 50 percent because energy cannot be created not destroyed what the heck happens waste heat it all turns to heat now uh, chp aka combined heat and power that's in the name is just utilizing that wasted heat that's the whole point instead of having a giant radiator trying to cool this puppy uh, it utilizes that energy so that's the whole point now question comes well, why the heck you want to do that because complexity is the enemy of reliability and when you are talking about power you have to have uh, you know absolute certainty and the more things you add the more things can break down the more uh, hassle it becomes more expensive it becomes to run because you have to have higher maintenance cost and not to mention higher capital investment so why the heck people would want to do that and many uh, in past if you were to ask people about this because the concept is very old if you are asked anybody in the past they were like yeah not worth it but nowadays fuel prices are going up now if you take a graph if the longer the graph the better it would be if you like uh, let's say start from 1994 price is going up and down bit of spike but average is always going up 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 it bit bit emotional in 2009 went way too up then it started to come down like stabilize in 2014 then there is a dip uh, and then it went up that's it like if you actually average it out the prices are going up no questions asked it's like just price are going up so there is a financial intense uh, you know incentive another aspect it while people may have different opinion about co2 emissions every tom dick and harry is absolute about nox emission uh, sulfur emissions because these things have instantaneous response on your human body it's like okay uh, this power plant started everybody started to feel that like air started to feel dirty because of that emissions so people want to reduce it it's like dude i live here let's say you made the power plant you would ideally want to live nearby it is like you know just for maintenance and all that jazz you ideally would want to do that but emissions make it difficult another aspect right? that waste heat would be generated no matter what it's not like you are generating it it's like it's a consequence of doing that action so fundamentally it's free energy for you it's like you just have to harness it and total efficiency that's the core point the mega joule content of the chemical energy you cannot exceed that point but let's say it started with a 10 megajoule you can extract upwards of 90 percent and some systems have achieved a uh, bonkers of like 94 percent uh, but realistically speaking you can still easily expect around 80 percent but mind you that's double the efficiency so it's really really beneficial now how the heck this sort of system works now fundamentally uh, the fuel of choice is generally a gaseous fuel does not matter whether it's biogas natural gas propane whatever have you but generally people prefer gas for this another aspect is uh, what the heck is happening like what are you actually doing to make this chp you are taking fuel right now especially in western part of the world because it's cold uh, you have fuel goes to power plant makes electricity and then you transport it while the electrical generation could be very efficient but you have to understand the power plant could be very far away so transmission Loss is very significant and then again that loss is there so then you send a certain amount of fuel let's say especially in case of natural gas you will pipe it in and that will burn into boilers and boiler will give you the heat and again some heat loss will also occur there also so if you start with 100 units of fuel you get uh, units of useful uh, fuel basically is 56 that's how much you are used uh, utilizing so to say however if you do combined heat and power uh, you start with 100 because you are doing on-site generation even though if your power plant is not that efficient transmission loss is much less you can literally have much higher uh, efficiency in terms of electrical total generation and because you can directly utilize the waste heat which would have been generated no matter what uh, you get useful energy of 80 that's the whole point you can st uh, literally start from 56 and go to 80 that's why people want to do this it's like we have the limited supply of fuel uh, might as well utilize it more efficiently and in last video i talked about like uh, in future we're gonna have a lot of small power plants and uh, that ecosystem of multiple small power plants kind of uh, fertilizes the environment for this kind of puppies uh, because while you can make a power plant which has combined heat and power you have to do combined 
combine heat and power power because you can't sell heat selling heat is not feasible fundamentally again some places do have the luxury of centralized heating for a district but most places are not so if a big power plants that is like you know far away you have to convert that heat into electricity can that be done yes it has been done specifically with the natural gas there are some natural gas power plant from general electric uh, that has like jet engine as the primary mover and then the exhaust goes into a steam boiler boils the water and then another turbine is run and that creates a residual energy efficiency can achieve as high as like 84 percent but be mindful that's expensive now if you are in a place where uh, basically fuel is expensive people will like do extract every single uh, joule out of it so people pay for it but if you are in a place where gas is not that uh, expensive you will be like eh, not interested so generally all that is happening does not matter we are utilizing uh, whatever fuel you are talking you are just taking the exhaust so you have a combustion engine the exhaust goes into heat exchanger you have a jet engine the exhaust goes into heat exchanger that's all there is to it it's nothing fancy it's just exhaust goes to heat exchanger and that hot fluid generally we utilize fluid can be utilized as a second energy source that's up to you what you want to do with that that's up to you but now you have a second energy source so you go from like let's say power plant efficiency of 30 to 40 percent if you're really really advanced Power plant 40 to 50 percent to bunkers 70 to 80 to 70, uh, 80 plus percent most general scenarios some have achieved a 90 percent but that's like a very edge case like very well tuned fine tuned machine uh, but that's the system about this now what's the use of it uh, fundamentally speaking heat has a lot of uses and not to mention especially in uh, colder places especially places where it snows a lot heat becomes a necessary requirement it's not like an optional thing you have to have heat otherwise you could literally freeze to so fundamentally, uh, we utilize heat for bathing, washing clothes, which is a necessary part in hospitals, even in uh, basically uh, hotels, but again, hotels are considered a luxury. Uh, so, but washing uh, with like hot water is necessary for sanitization also. So fundamentally, that's an important thing. And space heating, which is not an optional thing if you are in a place where if you sleep without, uh, you know, uh, space heating, you could literally sleep and never wake up. So fundamentally, these are absolute required. But again, many of my Indian veterans would be like, dude, we live in a hot place. What the hell are we gonna do with extra heat? So they're not, we have the luxury of what we call absorption chiller. Consequence, it's an expensive unit that you have to add on, not super easy. And it will reduce efficiency a little bit, but you can take that heat and drive a system that will give you cool. Basically, it's just replacing the uh, compressor aspect of it with a heater. And uh, benefit, it does work. Uh, consequence is a bit bigger and expensive, but you do get cooling out of it. So think of it this way. You have a power plant that's producing electricity. That electricity does not need to run the air condition. Air condition, which is a very significant power consumer, you don't have to worry about it. It's like that's running on waste heat. Think of it, the power savings we are talking about here. So that's why it's a very useful thing. It's not just like, oh, it's heat. I can't do anything with it. Does not matter. You can cool it also. Uh, think of it this way. Let's say you are running a, uh, like, you know, some specifically far out places where you have to make sure uh, you are running a refrigerator. You just have a power plant and the power, like small power plant is like a few kilowatts or one or two kilowatt. That exhaust, uh, hot exhaust is utilizing to run a refrigerator and it's running constantly. You don't have to, uh, you know consume that few kilowatts that you are barely generating to run the air condition or the refrigerator for food storage so there is a lot of actual potential with this puppy so these are the users it's up to you and that's the consequence of it that's why it's not done with a giant power plant like oh there is this power plant you can't transmit heat that effectively like from that far like you can but it's not going to be cost effective so people are not going to do that now you can utilize a sterling engine in the secondary cycle and extract more electricity out of it but that's only done if the fuel is expensive now cost this is one thing that i always come back to because simply times i've read many comments like every comment and this is my english channel my, in my hindi channel it's like almost reaching 100k subscribers um cost is a very significant thing that people overlook most of the time because cost is directly proportional to your local resource cost think of it this way electricity in different places are at different prices for different tiers of a user electricity at a different cost like per unit charge is different for a commercial use it would be different for a medical absolute use it would be different for a, let's say basically home appliance it would be different so you could be in a scenario where it's like hey i'm consuming this much amount of power government is like okay pay us this fixed amount of money as a like you know maintenance and all that just and your consumption cost awesome but like let's say you started to consume more government will be like no we, now we have to give three phase power to you now your minimum requirement goes up so you may be paying a lot more so which we are not familiar with that's why cost analysis is the first thing and anytime you will think about like why the heck people are not doing this generally the answer is cost I apologize for background noise uh, so it's not suited for small homes do not think like again you could utilize that 
but again it's not that uh, financially viable uh, you could do that specifically in some places if you have a gas grid and that gr gas grid is directly uh, running 24 into 7 especially in winter months you may be like hey i have to use the gas for heating otherwise it's a you know hazard uh, might as well have a small uh, chp system and get the electricity also and sell that electricity back into the grid because again you may not be consuming the electricity all the time so that way you could uh, subsidize the system so it could be done uh, for small households, but uh, it's not recommended. Generally, it's recommended for big uh, buildings. Basically, if you have 10 or 10, 20 units, then it starts to become uh, feasible. Large building, really awesome. The bigger the you get, the more uh, financially viable it becomes. Now, hospitals are running on this puppy. They are like, whoa, this is awesome system. For example, I have provided a lot of video down below. Please check it. Uh, there is a medical center in new york now this puppy uh, they have like bed capacity is 832 so a lot of energy consumption and uh, chp system was installed in 1993 yes and uh, the electrical power the power plant that we are talking about it's 9.5 megawatts think of the waste heat that this puppy has and that's the whole reason why they did that the waste heat is so much that it can literally heat that whole place without any issue it's like bro we don't have heating bill we have like you know waste heat that does the heating and for st uh, sterilization washing like you know hundreds of uh, staff clothes and all that jazz like that's a significant uh, you know energy expenditure you're like dude that's waste heat so uh, their data point is around 2.3 million dollar saved per year because of this puppy so even if, if let's say it costed them like uh, 10 million dollar to st establish this setup they would have uh, made the money back and the life expectancy of this kind of plant is around 20 30 years easily and that's after that it's not like it dies it's just like you have to do a thorough maintenance at that point so you get the point cost is a very significant thing it's not very well suited for very small things but it is suited for uh you know medium kind of scenarios you have commercial buildings large apartment complex those sort of places start to make sense specifically if you have to consume gas might as well get electricity out of it so that's the whole point of cost so this was my presentation on uh, basically combined heat and power i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your disappointment please leave a comment uh, because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching